This is a Macintosh 2SI that I got hold of recently, and uh, it has already featured with a portrait display in a previous video. As we saw in that video, there were some serious jail bars on the screen, and this is likely due to the capacitors on the motherboard needing changing. While there's nothing wrong uh, with collecting for the sake of having, don't tell my wife I said that, I do actually have a specific use in mind for this machine if I manage to get it working properly. For me, the computer on top of my current bucket list is a Performa 636CD, since this was the first color multimedia computer that my family got back in 1995. That computer is long gone, unfortunately, but uh, I still have the original uh, mouse. And uh, the original keyboard. I also have the um, original install CDs, as we can see here. And I have this Radio Shack um, CD holder with lots of CDs that I used to enjoy as a child. Here are some of them. Dinosaur Safari, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Ah, this one, I love this one. Um, the way things work. There's the install CD again. Ah, this one, this was our favorite. The Five A Day Adventures from Dole Food Company. Uh, and the Time Almanac. This was amazing. I mean, this actually had video on a computer, video on a computer. This was the first time I experienced yeah. that. So um, now I don't currently have a 68K system with a CD player to play around with these games. Um, well, at least I didn't until recently. Uh, well, a while back, actually, now, when um, I got uh, this bad boy. This is an external SCSI CD-ROM drive. And uh, I didn't know if it worked, and I didn't have a cable to test it out. So one needs a um, DB25 to uh, Centronix 50 cable, and it took me a while to get hold of one. But... Uh, I finally managed, and this is how it looks. Um, to my delight, it did work, and uh, as you can see here, it did look rather comical here with my Macintosh SE FDHD. The, uh, the drive is huge, but uh, not quite huge enough to sit nicely underneath. For my purposes, the SE didn't cut it though, as I needed a color screen to enjoy all that childhood multimedia. My only other 68K option was my Quadra 700. The problem there, though, is that I don't have enough video RAM to uh, drive the monitor at its set resolution with the required uh, 1256 colors for my old uh, CDs. The 2SI here, though, has a lower resolution, and so it manages the 256 colors needed to run the programs on my CDs. But until I recap it, um, it won't be very enjoyable. I do... Um, like the shape of this to SI case. It manages some uh, golden ratio between the uh, enormously bulky 2CI and the strangely minimal LC. It's uh, ironic that uh, now I want to use this with a CD drive, since this was the very thing that doomed this case design. The 2SI was the only computer with this case, since there wasn't enough space here to fit an external CD drive in when all computers in the early 90s started to be fitted with that. So I'm going to recap this logic board and try to get this CD drive working with this 2SI and have a look at some of these uh, childhood CDs. In my previous video, I had a brief look at the uh, logic board and uh, it looked rather good. No battery leakage and no visible spilling caps. When I got the power supply out, however, I did notice that uh, there was some strange corrosion on the chips underneath it. Let's open it up and take a closer look. A word of warning here, I struggled quite a bit with the fan assembly, all videos that I've seen make it look uh, very easy like this, but uh, be warned. The case and all the components open and come out entirely without tools and the plastic uh, is holding up well in this machine. Plastic seemed to have gotten more brittle in the later 90s.
We can leave the speaker assembly in there, the case in general, and the lower part especially is in good shape. So this is the weird crustiness on some of the chips and uh, here on one of the through-hole caps. There is some green corrosion on the contacts there and uh, those tiny components. The surface mount caps don't look too bad, but the solder does look a bit crusty. I'm going to deal with this crustiness once I've uh, removed the old caps and uh, before I put the new ones in place. I'll remove the old caps by heating the solder joint and lifting one side at a time. In my experience, twisting might result in lifted traces. Adding some solder pastes helps with the soldering. There are 11 of these surface mount caps on this board, so uh, it is quite labor intensive. I'm not sure why the crustiness happens away from the battery and the capacitors. Maybe someone can give a suggestion in the comments. I do know that vinegar uh, usually cleans this up nicely, but uh, soapy water and IPA is necessary afterwards to make sure that any leftover vinegar isn't eating away on the metal. I'm going to scrub it off with soapy water and then use isopropyl and alcohol to drive out the water. So this is the Lassie external um, CD-ROM drive, SCSI, and we see here that it has two, sort of four, two and six times speed. And uh, there's an audio out jack, volume control, Eject button on the back. We have a fan grill, on off button, power jack. Looks like audio left and right. Centronics 50 um, connectors. You can daisy chain more um, SCSI devices. And uh, I guess this is termination on and off. This is the last device. And here is the ID selector. It's really good to be able to uh, select that. Let's take a closer look inside this thing. It seems pretty straightforward with four screws on the bottom and two on the back. halves come apart quite easily. I love the solidness of this thing. Nice thickness to the metal. So this is actually a Yamaha drive from April 1998. Not exactly period appropriate for us here, but uh, I should have guessed that from the speed markings on the front. Connections there in the back. There's quite a lot of air in this case. It does feel like uh, it really is unnecessarily chunky. There we have the power supply with a hefty fan. We don't need to worry about overheating, just the noise. So these are the 13 new caps to be installed, two through-hole caps and 11 surface mount caps. I bought uh, a set this time, although I do prefer the tantalum caps for surface mount in general. The board cleaned up quite nicely. I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, but I did use vinegar and soap and a toothbrush and then uh, plenty of isopropanol alcohol. I'm just letting this little clip speak for itself as to why I'm not recording the soldering itself. It was a real nightmare. Finally, I did manage to get all 13 of them in place. It's not pretty, so no zoom-ins, but uh, they should uh, work well. And they're well attached, at least. Here's a tour of them all. <laughs> And with that done, it's time to put it back together again.
So here then finally is the setup with the 2SI and the external, let's see, CD drive. The let's see fan does make a lot of noise. Let's see if the drive ejects properly. Yes, no problem there. Now the computer. Nice chime, but uh, more noise. That's quite a lot of sound. I recently installed a Noctua fan in a SC30 already running a blue SCSI, but in this one, it's all original, the spinning disc hard drive and uh, the original fan. Now that image is thoroughly discouraging. Still pretty intense jail bars. I don't think they have gotten better at all, actually. Right off the bat, it makes me think that it wasn't a logic board capacitors after all, but something else. One component that I haven't recapped is the power supply. I know it is notoriously unreliable on the 2SI and usually in need of recapping. I opened it and had a look, but uh, there wasn't any visible leakage. That doesn't mean, of course, that it's okay. Um, I just wouldn't expect the power supply issues to manifest in these jail bars. Still five megabytes of RAM there visible. I'm going to change it to color mode to see if uh, it gets better, like before the recap in the last video. Yes, the jail bars do disappear. There is some artifacts on the left of the screen with 256 colors, but uh, the image is really perfect with uh, 256 shades of gray. Anyone know how this could be? I need to recap that power supply to eliminate uh, that uh, potential source of error, but uh, that will have to be in a later video. For now, the 256 colors should be good enough for some uh, 90s kids CDs. I need to use the SCSI director to mount the CD drive. I tried with the Lido 7 and uh, it saw the drive, but uh, it didn't mount it. Let's try this, uh, The Tale of Peter Rabbit audiobook. That uh, didn't work. I uh, need to refresh in uh, SCSI director and mount it once it sees the CD also, not just the uh, CD drive. There it is, a CD on the desktop of a 2SI. Brilliant. Let's see how the audio and colors are rendered here. Well, there is something wrong with the graphics there, some lines with smudging. This is probably related to the issues we saw earlier. Sound is quite good though, considering the small speaker facing down underneath the 2SI and all the ambient fan and disc noise. This will be a good disc to come back to once I've uh, recapped the power supply, since the graphic issue is so articulated. Now let's have a look at this dual food company infomercial game thing that uh, occupied me and my siblings for many hours back in the day. It too needs to be mounted in uh, SCSI director. I installed the necessary quick time extensions included on the CD. The five megabytes installed RAM uh, isn't enough to run this, so I had to add some uh, virtual memory. I also took the opportunity to turn on the 32-bit addressing and beef up the cache some. 
Without a special extension available on Macintosh Garden, this has to be set every time I reboot since there's no PRAM battery. There's a link uh, to that extension and also to the special Macintosh 2SI RAM Muncher extension that improve RAM speeds for memory architecture reasons on this uh, machine. And you can see the links down in the description. Yes, Five a Day Adventure. Five a Day Adventures is sponsored by the Dome Food Company. It does take a bit to load, but uh, not too bad. Oh yeah, the intro video, very 90s. Actual video on a computer was the coolest uh, of the cool as a kid. There was some stuttering, but uh, our Performa 636 uh, did of course have a 33 megahertz processor. Uh, after all, and uh, this 2SI only has 20 megahertz. I don't remember how much RAM we had though. Well, if this didn't get the kids to eat vegetables, then uh, I suspect nothing would. The world's totally coolest right banana, see. hands down. Now let's just listen to the song in the factory. That is a classic. Wow, not unlike uh, the modern Toka Boka game, if you know, you know. Maybe I'll introduce this one to my little ones. So this worked out uh, as a great way to enjoy my childhood games and uh, 68K multimedia. I'm not quite done with the 2SI yet though. The power supply needs recapping. I'm going to put a safe clock battery in it and I'll probably retrobite it at some point. I do really miss the Performa 636 CD though. My dad and I took it home with us to the UK from UCSB in California in 1995. And from what I gather, the 636 was only sold through educational establishments in the US. They don't turn up for sale very often, and when they do, they are in the US and shipping and import fees are merciless. It's going to be some time before I can muster the 300 US dollars plus for buying and shipping the 636. But until then, I'll be able to enjoy this setup. Well, that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button. And if you like more retro computing coming your way, do consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you for watching. Bye.